Hello and welcome to another video by Easy Academy. In this particular video, I'm going to be covering some of the recent changes that happened in the Apache Kafka project when it comes to running your cluster without Zookeeper, also known as craft mode. So if craft mode is something that you have not heard before, this is when you're running your Kafka cluster without any kind of Zookeeper dependency. If you need to know more about this, please feel free to check, my, check out my video that covers this in detail. I will have the link to that video in this description and you can take a look at it if you need to understand more about what craft is and what it means to run Kafka without Zookeeper. But let's take a look at the content for today and let's get started. So I would uh, quickly announce that right now, craft mode is not yet production ready. It's not yet GA or generally available. But I will talk to you in more details about a particular keep that was just introduced that will cover the exact timeline as to when Kafka will be ready for GA in uh, in the next releases that are coming up, when it's going to be marked as production ready, when Zookeeper will be deprecated, and when Zookeeper will be removed altogether. And we'll cover that in this specific keep. Now, we also had two recent changes, one in 3.2 and one in 3.1 that tightened the configuration combination so that nothing illegal is allowed when the cluster is about to start or after the cluster has started uh, has started running. I will also cover something called a standard authorizer that was introduced into running Kafka without Zookeeper that allows you to do this without any more dependency on, on Zookeeper. Let's take a look at keep h01 what is keep h01 so in keep h01 if you're not familiar with what a keep is so keep is the kafka improvement proposal so it is a kind of standard process where if we need to introduce something new either a new feature or a new process in the apache kafka project you have to go through this process where it is nominated the details are outlined it is voted upon approved and then implemented and brought into the Apache Kafka project. So for Keep H01, the same thing had to happen because this authorizer was needed. Let's cover in detail what Keep H01 is about. So this introduced a standard authorizer that does not depend anymore on Zookeeper. And you should now be able to run your Apache Kafka cluster without having the need to do it with Zookeeper. And how does this work? So this works by storing the uh, the, authorizer, the authorizer's metadata in an internal topic on the controllers known as underscore underscore cluster metadata. This is where the authorizer's metadata is kept inside this internal topic. And this is the default that is used by all the nodes that are part of the cluster. Now, this provides the same capabilities as the previous authorizer, the ACL authorizer that still depends on Zookeeper. The only difference is that this one does not depend anymore on Zookeeper because prior to this 3.2 release, you still had to run Zookeeper if you needed to use the ACL authorizer because the ACL authorizer, even for clusters running in craft mode, still needed Zookeeper to function. This is no longer the case because the new authorizer does not depend on Zookeeper anymore. So that's it for this particular keep. The next two changes I'm going to be discussing is what was brought in 3.2 and the one in 3.1 that allows us to verify the settings in the nodes, either in Zookeeper mode or craft mode when you are making these configuration specifications. This one relates to dynamic configuration. So while the, after the cluster has started and it's still active and you would like to make these changes, this was added to make sure that nothing illegal is introduced while the cluster is still, is still running so that we don't have any kind of problems and the stability of the cluster is maintained. In the previous release, in 3.1, we had another change that was introduced and implemented to make sure that there is no illegal combination of com uh, configurations when running in craft mode and in non-craft mode or Zookeeper mode. So if something is supposed to be there, or if something is there and cannot be combined with another combination, then this makes sure that you don't introduce anything that is not valid or the combination is not acceptable. So that's what this change was mainly, mainly about, also to improve the stability of the cluster. So the first one that I wanna cover is that if you are running in Zookeeper mode or the non-craft mode, so this particular field called controller listener names should not be 
having any value it has to be empty uh, completely so that's one thing you have to specify if you don't do this you're gonna have problems when you're trying to start the cluster so if you don't if you, if you don't take this out well the, the cluster will not work and you have to uh, completely delete it or set it to blank or empty before you can start the cluster the other thing is running a controller so what is a controller again in that other video that i mentioned earlier if you take a look at that video it explains what a broker is and what a controller is when running in craft mode and also what the combined mode is which is typically when you have a particular a single node playing the role of of two the controller and the and the broker in, in in summary the broker stores the actual topic data and the controller handles the metadata which is what zookeeper used to do but my other video that i, I talk about this in detail covers all of this and how to set it up um, exactly so when running as a controller you cannot have any advertised listeners um, so that is what you have to pay attention to if you violate this the cluster will not start and you are going to have to fix this before it restarts so what does this mean exactly so this means that the listeners field or the advertised listeners field uh, you know can contain a listener that does not also appear in the controller listener names so it is exactly what it states there and then the next one is if you have a particular node that is a broker so sometimes a node could serve as just a broker meaning storing the topic data or it can serve as a combined node that is also a controller that stores metadata like zookeeper or just the, the broker that stores the topic data so if you have this scenario the advertised listeners must not include any listeners that's also appearing in the controller listener names you have to fix this before the, the cluster can restart if you don't fix this you're gonna have you're gonna have problems so if you're just coming from other or other kafka versions into 3.1 or 3.2 Pay attention to this so that you don't have any issues when you're running your cluster. Now, if you're running as just a controller or in mixed mode or combined mode, then you have to make sure that the controller listener names must uh, must be non-empty, and all of the values that you specified there should also appear in the listener's uh, configuration. So when you're running as just a, a broker, meaning just storing topic data inside this node. The controller listener names should also not be empty and none of them should appear in the listeners so this is something that we have to pay attention to and kind of practice so that we get used to it and when your cluster is not starting properly make sure you come to this keep and you check so that make sure you come to this particular jira issue take a look at it and make sure that you're not violating any of the configuration constraints that are specified in this uh, in this change so if you are running um, as a craft broker, meaning that you have a node that is running as a broker, a warning will appear if you know you have multiple things specified in the controller listener names because only the first entry is what the cluster needs to run. So just pay attention to that so that if you see that warning, you know what to do to fix uh, the warning from showing up in the future. So now we're gonna talk about what are some of the changes that are coming up in future releases of Kafka with regards to marking the craft mode as production ready or generally available, also known as GA. We're also going to cover when the zookeeper mode will be deprecated and when the zookeeper mode will be removed completely. So let's take a look at that. Now, if you're familiar with the Kafka release process, new releases typically come out every three to four months. The latest release is 3.2, which came out in May of 2002. So this implies that the 3.3 release should be coming out in September of 2022. So this also means that for craft mode to be production ready or generally available, we should expect to see this around September of this year in the 3.3 release. Now the next release after this should be around January 2023 which means that in the 3.4 release, we should expect to see the zookeeper mode deprecated, but not removed yet, but deprecated, and then removed in the subsequent release in Kafka 4.0, which we, the community expect to come out around May of 2023. This skip outlines the timeline and also what you should expect in each of these releases. So before craft is marked as production ready, generally the community will try to do whatever has to be done to make sure that all the features that you depend on when you're running in zookeeper mode are also available 
in the craft mode or the mode without zookeeper and then the zookeeper mode will be deprecated in 3.4 and deleted altogether in the next major release which is 4.0 so this was everything i had uh, for you in this particular video if you like this video if you think it's helpful please like it because it will help the algorithm in youtube to recommend this video to other people that are looking for similar content you can also share this video with anyone you think will benefit uh, from this particular video and subscribe to my channel if you have a, have not already uh, done so which is uh, the easy academy channel so please please feel free to subscribe uh, to that uh, as soon as you can and then you can follow me on twitter to see some of my upcoming content that i have on youtube and other platforms and you can check out my website for additional content and more information about my channel and me as a, as a person now the next thing i wanted to cover is that if you're looking for open source strategies on how you can leverage open source software to aggregate to analyze to store and to process data in batch mode or in near real time you can check out my course on udemy and the link to that will be available in the video description i really appreciate your time watching this video and i appreciate your feedback if there's anything that you would like me to discuss more please feel free to put that as a comment on this video don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share with anyone you think will benefit from this content thank you very much for your time and i will see you in the next video